Hi, this is Dr. Thomas, math instructor at Lawson State Community College, and in this review session, I want to talk to you about Section C of the Readings Exam. And specifically, I'm going to show you how to work with the percents, decimals, fractions, and the negatives involved in this section. Remember, just remember you know this stuff already, but what they're doing in this section is they're giving you bigger numbers and they just want to see if you really know your energy rules, do you really understand the concept of negative numbers, okay? They're also asking you to be able to change a fraction to a decimal to a percent or a percent to a decimal to a fraction and vice versa so you really need to know how to get from one state to the other in this section so here's section C this is how section C looks and this is the spring 2011 phase 1 readiness exam and what I want to focus on in this this review session is number 8 through 21. Second part of the exam. So let's look at number 8 really quickly. As you can see number 8 we have a negative 37 plus negative 16 and if you're still unsure about negative numbers you really need to go back and review the integrity session I did on integers and what does it mean to have to add two negative numbers so when you're adding if you have the same sign you sum same sign sum so SSS same sign sum alright so you will add these two numbers together and your answer will be negative you keep the sign of to keep the sign that you have so both are negative so your answer will be negative okay let's look at number 10 here and what I'm going to do is just use this palette here okay so number 10 we have 15.8 minus a negative 19.6 it's important to know that just because you have a parenthesis here this does not mean multiplication because you have a minus sign in the middle that actually means subtract. Do not multiply 15.8 times negative 19.6. You're really doing 15.8 minus a negative 19.6. So whenever you have a minus sign, you're going to keep change flip. So let's change this minus sign to a plus sign and we're going to flip this sign. So it's originally negative. We're going to make it positive. So what does it end up being? It ends up being 15.8 plus 19.6. Okay. All right. So let's line up the decimals. This is how you add decimals. You line them up. 8 plus 6, 14. Put my decimal right there. Line all the decimals up. Carry the 1. 15 carried to 1, 3. So the answer is 35.4. Alright, let's look at number 11. Look at number 11. So again, we have a plus sign in the middle. That means we need to add these two fractions together. So we have negative 4 fifteenths plus a negative 7 eighteenths. Now, when you have fractions and you're adding or subtracting them, you must get the same denominator. So you must find the LCD. What is the LCD of 15 and 18? So right now you can pause this video and try to figure out what is the LCD of 15 and 18. All right. The answer is 90. 90. 15 and 18 can both go in 90. So let's multiply 15 times what would make it 96. And 18 times 5. 
Okay. What are the equivalent fractions? All we have to do is multiply across negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. And negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. Since our denominators are the same, we can combine the numerators. What is negative 24 plus a negative 35? So since we have the same signs here, we're adding the same signs, we will add and we keep the sign. So 24 plus 35 is 59. And I always simplify, but there is no number that can go in both 59 and 90 at the same time. So the answer is negative 59 over 90. Alright, let's move and look at number 12. Again, we have fractions and we have a plus sign in the middle. So we need to come up with the LCD. What is the LCD of 8 and 9? All right, 72 is correct. So 8 times 9 will give us that 72. And you need to multiply top and bottom by 9. 9 times what will give you 72? 8, of course. Therefore, the equivalent fractions are negative 45 over 72 plus 40 over 72. So if you're wondering where those numbers came from, all you're doing is multiply this times this, and there's a negative in the front, and this times this. So negative 5 times 9, negative 45, 5 times 8, 40. Now, we have the same denominator, so we can combine the numerators. What is negative 45 plus 40? Now notice we have different signs. So notice this is negative and this is a positive 40 here. So you must subtract and take the sign of the higher number. So we subtract these two numbers and we will get 5, right? But 45 is higher than 40. The absolute value of these two numbers, which one is higher of the absolute value? So uh, 45 is negative, so the answer is negative 5 over 72. Let's skip number 13 and go to number 14. We have 8.7. Now notice here that no sign is in front of this open parenthesis. So when a number is right next to the parenthesis, the open parenthesis, then this means multiplication. So multiply here. Alright, we need to multiply. And when we're multiplying a positive times a negative number, the answer will be negative. So I know that my answer will be negative. So go ahead and put your negative sign up there. So all you need to do is figure out what 8.7 times 5.6 is. And when you're multiplying, you really need to write a line your numbers so you you don't have to you don't supposed to line up the decimals, but it just happens to be lined up here. But you sort of just write a line your numbers just like regular multiplication. So 7 times 6 is 42, 3 to 4, 8 times 6 is 48, plus 8, 52, 5 times 7 is 35, okay, 3 is 43, then add the columns, 2 plus 5 is 7, 5 plus 3 is 8, bring down the 4, and then you have one decimal place here. This is one decimal place, so one number behind the decimal, so one decimal place, and another one decimal place. Add them together, so two decimal places. All right, so your, your decimal should be two decimal places, so right here. So negative 48.72 is the answer. Moving on, let's do number 15 here. 
So we have a negative number divided by a negative number. So you automatically you know your answer should be positive. So all you have to worry about is dividing 5.8 into 42.93. When you're dividing by a decimal, when you have a decimal over in this section over here, you must move the decimal so that you are dividing by a whole number. So we will move the decimal one place to the right because that will make this number over here 58, a whole number. So as many times as you move it on in the divisor here, you must move it in the dividend. So you moved it once here, you must move it once in the dividend. Alright, and go ahead and put your decimal, line your decimal up. So this is right here, line it up right here. Now let's proceed. 58 goes into 429 how many times? Alright, so you need to do some side calculations. 58 times what? Let's try 7. So that's 6, 56, 35, that's 40. And let's try 8, 64, 6, 46. So that's too much. So it's 7 times, which gives us 406. Subtract. 9 minus 6 is 3. 2. And you always bring down the next thing. Bring down that 3. And start over. 58 goes into 233. How many times? Alright, let's try 58 times. And you really need to be really neat when you do this because you may need these numbers again. And you, you don't really want to try to look for them like I'm, like I'm doing now. You really want to be a little bit neater than what I'm doing. Okay, so 58 times what? What do you think? I don't know. Uh, let's try 4. So 8 times 4 is 32. So that gives me all right, 232, right? Very, very close. So let's put 4 here. 232 and then we have 1 and we need to bring down a 0 so let's give me 0 then we need to bring down 0 again fifty eight goes into 100 how many times? 1 times alright and what do we have left? make that a 10 so that's 2 9, 4, alright, add another 0, how many times does 58 go into 420? Seven times, and it looks like it just keeps on going on and on and on, okay, so we have 406 here, So hopefully on the readiness exam, it doesn't keep on going on and on and on. But until it terminates, you really need to keep on going. Okay? So it's at least 7.4017. Now let's see if they specify. Do they specify? Do we need to round? Says put answers in lowest terms where applicable. Uh, so it doesn't say round. So you actually need to keep on going on and on until it terminates. All right. Let's go on to number sixteen here. This little chart says complete the table, reduce fractions if applicable. Reduce fractions if applicable. Notice they underlined it, so they really want you to put the reduce fractions as your answers not 2 over 12 for example they want you to put 1 over 6 so here we have 1 eighth how do you change 1 eighth to a decimal and how do you change 1 eighth to a percent so let's first change it to a decimal 
So the way to do that is to divide the denominator into the numerator, not the other way around. So how many times does 8 go into 1? Now, 1 of course is the same thing as 1.0 or 1.00 or 1.000. It all means the same. So go ahead and put your decimal right here. All right. I actually like to go 8 goes in 1 0 times. I like doing that. All right. And then you bring down your 1, then you bring down the next number 0. How many times is 8 goes in 10? 1 time. 1 times 8 is 8. Subtract, then you get 2, then you bring down another 0. So you need to keep on adding zeros until it terminates. So 8 goes into 20 how many times? 2 times. Write this in black. 2 times. Say right. so 2, 16, 4, add another 0. So 8 goes into 40 5 times. And that's when we have no remainder so it terminates. So the answer here is 0 0.125. Now how do you change this 0 0.125 to a percent? You're just going to move it to the decimal two places to the right and it give you 12.5 percent. Now let's move on to number 18, number 19. We have 65 percent. How do you change that to a decimal? Just go backwards. So 65 percent sixty five percent is the same thing as if with a decimal is the same thing as sixty five point the decimal is behind the five sixty five is the same thing as sixty five with a decimal behind it so to change it to a decimal you just move it two places to the left All right so the answer is 0.65. Okay. So this should be 0.65. Drop the percent and move the decimal two places to the left. Now, how do you change 0.65 to a fraction? So 0.65. You first, got to figure out what place. Is in. So this is tens, this six is in the tens place, and five is in the hundreds place. So this is the same thing as 65 over 100. So already you have a fraction, but it's not reduced. It's not in simplest form. So you need to reduce it. Do not put 65 over 100 for number 18 because I automatically see that five can go in both 65 and 100. How many times does 5 go in 65? 13 times. How many times does 5 go in 100? 20 times. So the answer is 13 over 20. And to check that, you can always divide 20 into 13 to see if you get 0.65. And then move it just from two places to the right, you get 65%. All right, let's try the last one here. We have 0 0.38. Now, how would you change that to a fraction? Well, we just did one, right? All right, and how would you change that to a percent? You should know now. All you have to do is move it two places to the right and add your percent sign. There you go. Simple as that. Simple as pi. All right, how do you change 0.38 to a fraction? What place is this 0.38? Okay. Hundreds place. So this is the same thing as 38 over 100, but don't forget it must be in reduced form. And I already see that both 38 and 100 can be divided by 2. So how many times does 2 go into 38? 19 times. How many times does 2 go in 100? 50 times. So the answer is 19 over 50. 
So don't forget that you need to put your answers in reduced form and you need to understand energy rules for this section and you need to be able to work with fractions and find the LCD. So that concludes the second part of the review session for section C of the readiness exam. I hope that it helps and I pray that you pass.